Uh, my name is Nick Shadrin. I'm a technical solutions architect uh, here at Nginx. And um, uh, we will be talking about uh, some enterprise features uh, for uh, simple applications. So how many of you uh, has, have ever built a web application for your own use? I know that I have. So yes, oh, mo <laughs> looks like most of us have built some, uh, some simple applications. And um, let me switch to the next slide. Um, we will take a very simple application as an example. The name of the application is uh, Docker UI. It's, uh, it, it is a great piece of code which is uh, written in Go and it, uh, it runs as a Docker container itself. And what it does is providing you, uh, it's providing you as, um, an interface to manage your Docker containers. A very nice interface, very clean application, works perfectly, I love it. But the thing is, I really cannot um, use this application in um, a lot of, uh, in any of the production environments directly, because uh, the application itself doesn't know anything about um, authentication, about security, and um, it doesn't uh, log very good information. So uh, we need to uh, secure it and make it uh, more enterprise friendly. Okay, let's switch to uh, this great demo. Um, what, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to walk through the Nginx configuration in front of the Docker UI application, and then we will see how that uh, configuration changes um, the way the application itself works. I told you this, uh, this whole demo is command line. <laughs> All right, so um, we have a few uh, interesting uh, uh, directive and configuration uh, examples here. Um, first thing I want to, uh, to go through, that's going to be uh, the configuration of uh, the Nginx upstream. What we did here, we ran, um, uh, we, uh, we used the Docker UI um, server as a, as a backend here, and we defined it in the upstream block. So where did I take this information about uh, the server running on port 8970? I'll show it right here. <clears throat> uh, we have the Docker UI application running um, with, uh, within this, uh, this port, and we are mapping that port uh, inside the container. So obviously, this application becomes our backend, and it is defined in the upstream block. <clears throat> Um, also, we have uh, a couple of different server blocks here. One server block is defined with, um, with listening on the port 80, and it just performs the redirect for the uh, port 4.3. That is a, a very basic um, uh, user-friendly feature here. And the, the next server block is quite interesting. It's uh, listening on the port 4.4.3 with SSL. And um, what we have here is uh, uh, both the, uh, the server certificate uh, definition and also uh, the client certificate. Um, in addition to that, we, uh, we are saying that the client certificate authentication for this server becomes uh, optional. So uh, the users who don't have the client certificate will still be able to open that application. Now let's get to the, uh, to the more, in more interesting parts. Um, in our main location for this application, we uh, turned on uh, the authentication. Uh, the authentication in this case is performed with HTTP basic type, and um, we created um, an HTTP basic uh, user file with a few users here. <clears throat> um, the rest of the configuration is uh, mostly related to um, the WebSocket configuration uh, because uh, uh, Docker UI is using WebSockets, and uh, with Nginx we can um, we can connect. Uh, um, we can proxy the web sockets uh, using um, a few uh, with the use of, of the few configuration lines. And um, also, we have another very special location here, which is um, a regular, uh, regular expression location, where we are looking at um, the different um, actions that this application can perform. And we are uh, using mostly the same um, mostly the same configuration with the very uh, with one uh, one difference we have um, we are comparing the value of an nginx variable ssl client verify 
and if our uh, if our client uh, came with a, a client certificate, we are going to pass it uh, through to the back end. And if, the, if someone canceled the client certificate verification and, or didn't have a client certificate, we are going to uh, deny access with um, uh, the 403 um, error code. So uh, an, another uh, interesting thing that we did, we, we defined this as a, as a variable as well. And if we scroll up, we will see that we are also logging that variable in our log files. An example that we are logging it uh, into a file is just one of the options that you might want to have. Uh, there is also a great option to have uh, to perform that log uh, login into uh, the syslog server, either on premises or in the cloud environment using the syslog service. Okay, let's uh, let's scroll back. We have a couple of other uh, interesting locations here. Uh, the location status which I have uh, here defines uh, the Nginx um, uh, status um, uh, API, which will show you um, a lot of statistics on this current running Nginx instance. I will show that in a moment. <clears throat> okay. Um, there is also another interesting uh, server block that we have here, which is listening not on a TCP port, but it is listening on a Unix socket in the file system. And um, this is um, uh, this block, uh, together with the upstream, um, allows you to proxy an API that is exposed not as a TCP port, but uh, that is exposed as a, um, as a socket in the file system. Also, you can use the same set of uh, features, like having um, SSL on the front end, authentication, um, and other things um, in front of an uh, API that can be exposed as a TCP socket. That gives you the flexibility of the file system permissions together uh, with the network-based um, uh, ACLs and security features. <coughs> All right, so that is basically the Nginx configuration. But um, um, I promised to show you an example how that actually works in a browser. So let's, uh, let's open a, a web browser. Since it requires the client, uh, client certificate, I will um, open a clean instance of that. And also, I will open um, the incognito window, so we will be able to compare uh, two different ways of access this application. First, let's run it here. It runs with a host named Docker UI. And once I run it, it asks for the uh, client certificate. So in this window, we are going to accept the client cert. And it immediately pops, us, uh, uh, pops up the window for the HTTP basic authentication. Um, so here we will enter a very simple login and password. And um, we'll see the, uh, the Docker UI in action. It's definitely a great application, uh, very easy to manage your containers with it. So let's, uh, let's look at this container, and we can even perform some actions on it. Like, let's say we, we just stop the container, and it's no longer running. Also, we can display all the containers to see which ones uh, are running, which ones are not. So let's, let's run another container, so it's work, uh, it works just uh, uh, very nicely. So in another window, we'll do almost the same, but when we are presented with a window um, to, to select our client certificate, what we're going to do, we're going to decline it like we never had it. Since we specified the client's, um, uh, client certificate verification as an optional feature, it will still work, but remember the variable that we defined. The variable will be defined with a different value, and also it will, um, our if parameters in some of the actions um, should work. So let's, let's authenticate like we did before, and we'll see the Docker UI. Looks exactly the same like the other window, um, but if we open some of, the, some of those containers, and if we will try to uh, stop a container, we will see uh, that we have an error, HTTP 403, exactly with the message that we specified uh, in our configuration. So this simple configuration gives you uh, the access control and um, the security in front of an application which had no idea how to, um, how to perform that. So if we open the same, 
um, the same exact application with that port 8970, remember the port where, uh, where we have the running Docker container, it will open the, uh, the Docker UI with uh, no security, with no access control, and absolutely no um, ways to properly um, audit that. All right, let's go back to the command line. Um, now what we're going to do, we're going to, um, uh, to get to the uh, var slash log nginx directory, and let's, um, let's see what do we have in access logs. <clears throat> Remember that we specified a few um, special variables in those logs, and uh, those variables will be different compared, um, uh, depending on the type of authentication that we provided. If we provided a two-factor authentication, it will, it will show us uh, the, that the action was allowed. If we provided um, just one, uh, one authentication, in that case, the, uh, the action will be denied. So let's go to our um, good configuration where we have it uh, with the client certificate. So let's stop a container. And now in our logs, we see that we have the action allowed with the 200 response codes. And um, we see that the client uh, certificate verif verification uh, variable was the success. Okay. Let's go back to the other window and let's try to perform the kill of the container. We see our um, error message with HTTP 403 and we should also be able to see that in the logs. So here we can see our post action to the uh, Docker API and uh, the action says uh, denied because we, uh, because we did not provide that, that certificate in that browser window. So let me, uh, let me open back uh, the ETC and Nginx, uh, the Nginx configuration file. Right here in the log format, we defined, um, uh, we, we use this variable, and then we showed you the uh, SSL client verify variable as well. <coughs> so uh, this simple configuration is, um, um, it's, it's, it's really easy to configure, uh, configure that on any kind of Nginx instance, but it, um, once again, we used uh, the, the Docker UI as an example of the application. You can just as easily secure uh, practically any web application that uh, you might have configured for your own use or if you want to have an additional layer of security of the existing application. Um, everything looks good here, but I think I want to add another thing. Remember we were talking about HTTP2 this hour. Let's do that. Let's do HTTP2 as a parameter to, the, to our listen directive. And let's perform the Nginx re, um, reload. I wonder what we will see here. Uh, right here we can see um, that if we run it, if we refresh it, we can see that our um, browser is showing that it is HTTP2 enabled. Let's go back to the logs. In our logs, we can easily see that the request line has the HTTP, uh, HTTP 2.0. So uh, this, uh, this line and this, this parameter will actually allow us to uh, perform our own um, login or maybe statistics on how many clients are using um, HTTP 2 connectivity instead of uh, HTTP 1. Um, as, as you can see on the top of the screen, um, the, uh, before we enabled HTTP2 there, we could see the HTTP 1.1 um, for those, uh, uh, for the requests uh, through the normal HTTPS. <coughs> All right. Um, so this is uh, the general um, approach to, uh, to this demo, to the Docker UI demo. Uh, in order to see it in more detail, uh, maybe play a little bit uh, around this configuration, uh, well, the easiest way is to, um, to go to one of those uh, demo booths uh, at, um, at the front of the, uh, of the hall, and uh, this Docker UI demo is always available there. Um, what else can I show you? Um, there is w just one small thing that we also enabled behind that same interface, which was our uh, JSON 
uh, a response from Nginx status page, which was also secured by the same uh, exact same approach. So if you haven't played with, uh, with that tool, uh, this one gives us uh, really a lot of information about uh, uh, the running Nginx instance, um, about the running upstream configuration, and um, uh, the number of re requests and different, um, different kinds of responses that are going through, the, uh, through that server. Well, I guess I have a couple of slides here as well. Just as a recap, we added um, TLS security to um, the simple uh, Docker UI application. We added two-factor authentication with uh, the SSL um, client certificate and uh, HTTP basic authentication. Also, we added different access control depending on authentication types and um, some custom audit features with custom variables. And on this point, I will take uh, any questions that you might have. Um, yes. So in this particular demo, I was using the Nginx Plus build with the advanced features. And uh, basically, uh, one of the nice features that, we that, that was used here was the status JSON. And uh, the other feature was uh, the, um, the monitoring of uh, uh, the running application that was done with the active health checks uh, with Nginx Plus. Um, the rest of the features, uh, the SSL uh, configuration, client security, HTTP authentication, um, any regular expression or custom log configuration are fully open sourced. All right, since there are no other questions, thank you. <laughs>